When I first started, I didn't want to be a part of female in business, women in leadership at all, because I felt like it sounded like some kind of special needs group. And I didn't want to associate with that because I didn't want anyone else to notice. Now I realize that was a huge mistake. Over the course of your career, as you were rising up, did you encounter headwinds at work because you're a woman? When I started as a tech entrepreneur in Silicon Valley, the reality is there's just not that many other women. And to be honest, if there are, they're in the admin support roles. So people don't assume that you're the one that's giving the pitch or that you're the one that's in charge. So you've got this thing going on in the back of your mind. It was always with the awareness that they're overhearing men talk about me in a way that wasn't focused on my business or my idea, but more focused on what I looked like or my age or the fact that I was female. And obviously as a business leader, you don't want people to be distracted by that, but that was always present. And so you just forced it out of your mind or didn't acknowledge it to begin with? I mean, what was the... I tried to ignore instead of address or confront, I would be at a fundraising party and overhear a group of men saying something about me that was commenting on you know, my body. And instead of going over and interrupting them and being like, hey, I just pretend I didn't hear it. And I would go back to the next meeting and ignore it. If I think about that now and say, if I had to play that over again, what would I do? The me now would have gone and, and said something, but it was more the norm. And I think every woman just accepted that. And I'm glad that it's a time of change. I really do feel that. I feel like that's the biggest difference I could say between 10 years ago and today is that women are no longer just the de facto acceptance is that no matter where I go in this environment, people are going to be making inappropriate comments. And if you're in those meetings and getting mansplained and people are stealing your ideas and repeating them, what should you do? I would go address the person who was talking over me and saying, hey, listen, I bet you didn't intend to do this, but how I felt during the meeting was this. So I think you have to assume that the people doing it to you are not doing it because they're nefarious, are not doing it because they don't value you. Actually assume they do value you and they don't have ill intent, they just have habits. And then if you go up to them without a um, angry accusation, but the, the story I told myself is this, you talked over me. It, it made me feel bad and undervalued. What would be more productive for me is if we got to share the air. Wouldn't this company be more productive if everybody went to that meeting? And wouldn't you be a hero for being a person who exhibited that you were the leader that let other people be heard? I would say that to a subordinate, to a peer, and to a boss. And the great thing about that strategy is you're not being confrontational. You're not, you're staying on your side of the net and talking about how it made you feel rather than making up a story about why they did it. Well, I think that, first of all, confrontation is not a bad thing. When it comes to direct communication with candor, you can be candid and kind at the same time. And that's what I think people and women, to advance women in the workplace and themselves, have to recognize that there should be nothing controversial or negative with directly communicating and giving real-time feedback. That person's gonna be a lot more open-minded, they're gonna respect you, and they'll want you to bring those ideas to the table. And have you always been comfortable having those direct conversations? I didn't realize they were necessary. So no, I was not always like that, but I think like in all things in life, you become experienced and you get just a tiny bit better at things. There's a million more things I could learn, but candid communication is definitely something I'm focused on for myself and other executive and professional development inside our organization to cut through that crap and let people do the work.